Welcome back to Summit, everybody. My name is Mark. So glad to have you with us as we take a look at the ascension of our Lord. That's me watching Jesus go up to heaven. Okay. You know what's great about God? I mean, so many things are great about God. God rarely leaves us wondering about the what. Okay. God makes the what really clear. What we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do. What's going to happen, what's not going to happen. What God leaves us wondering about usually is the how. Sometimes the when, usually the how. I'll give you an example. When God's talking to us about, this is what I want you to do, he lays it out. Okay? Or God goes and tells you know, the Virgin Mary to the angel Gabriel, you know, you're going to bear a son. Her question isn't what? Her question is how. How? Not even when, because you can kind of figure that part out. Nine months, that kind of a thing. But God will tell you the what. Oftentimes in scripture, he leaves us wondering is the how. Why does he leave us wondering about the how? Because the how requires us to trust him. The how requires us to trust him, to be patient, to let his plan unfold over time. That's why the when isn't always answered, right? That the how and the when require us to walk with him and to trust in him and to be patient with him and to believe that he has it figured out because he's the author of the story and we're the characters. Where we get it backwards is when we try to act like we're the authors of our own story. <laughs> that's us playing God, and that's when it doesn't go well. But you see, as God, as the author of all life, which we hear about in Acts chapter 3, he has a perfect plan, and he's penning our story. We just have to watch the story unfold and keep being faithful along the way. That's his right as the author. His author is right. And that's where we get the word authority. And in this week's first reading, we're going to hear about authority. We get how God has the authority to do these things. And as, he, as he's about to he prepares to ascend into heaven, and his 11 are gathered there, where he's going to say to them, you're going to be my witnesses, my witnesses in Jerusalem and throughout Judea and Samaria. We're going to take what happened in Jerusalem, and we're going to go out to the rest of the world. It's really interesting. In Greek, the word witnesses is martyr, kind of a foreshadowing. But they're still going to stay allegiant to him. They're still going to listen. They're still going to follow him. But we're told that he has ultimate authority. In the second reading, we're going to, to the Ephesians, we're going to hear the words authority, dominion, power. St. Paul's trying to tell people in Ephesus, don't forget, okay? In Jesus, Jesus is not just like a lesser God. Jesus is not a different God. He is fully God, and he has full authority, full dominion, okay? It comes from the, the root for, for God and his power, right? And he has full power. And this is really, really important because he's trying to explain to the church in Ephesus and to all the Ephesians, Jesus is the guy, he didn't just die and rise because of another God. He is God, and he's got everything. He comes with full power, full authority, full dominion. What he said is it. Okay, so he's the guy you got to know. He is the door. He's the way. He's how we're going to get in. Does that make sense, everybody? And then even during the ascension account from the gospel in Matthew, they go to the top of the mountain, and he's preparing to ascend, and he's given this great commissioning, right? You're going to go out and baptize the nations. You're going to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know what it says about the apostles? It says they worshipped, but they doubted. But they doubted. Jesus has been appearing to you resurrected for 40 days. He's been working miracles. He's, he's appeared to you privately. He's appeared to big groups. I mean, he's come, he's gone, he's, he's passed through doors. I mean, he's, he, it's, it's, he's miraculous, he's glorified, he's Jesus, he's risen. How are you still doubting? Here's the thing. They weren't doubting that it was Jesus. They were doubting how they were going to do all this. Because at this point, they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet at Pentecost. Yes, he breathed on them, you know, on Easter. But they didn't have the fullness of the power of the Spirit yet. So, of course, they're doubting. You know what they're asking? How? He tells them the what, because that's what God does. You're going to go out. You're going to baptize. This is what's going to happen. But they're trying to figure out the how. How is this going to happen? You see, God says the same thing to us now. I want you to live a holy life. I want you to be my witnesses. I mean, you're a martyr sometimes. I want you to tell people about me. See, I have full authority, and I'm sharing my authority with you. I'm empowering you. My power is coming to you through the Holy Spirit. I want you to do this for me. I want you to go tell people about me. I want people to know me, and I want to use you to get them to know me. And you and I say, how? He's looking at you saying, are you kidding me? Do what I ask you to do. 
Come to my table. Be fed by me. Follow my commandments. Tell people about me. It's not that complicated. The how will work itself out. The when is right now. We know the what. We know the when. Don't worry about the how. Trust the Lord this week. The same way he ascended into heaven, he's going to call us to join him in heaven one day. We just got to walk day by day.